episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Hey, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Guam. We're going to the Battle of Fear Factory. This is George Corps, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Double Drop. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. The Magnificent Cool Battle of Tennessee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Anderson. Rex from Club Demo Hill. This is Gary Bruce from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Well, it's good to meet you, man. Like, I good to I'm, meet you too. Thanks for having me on board, dude. I, I, uh, I'm new to the to the band, but man, I've just been obsessively going through back through your stuff, dude. Like, oh, cheers. Man, I, I'm blown away, man. Like, I know you guys have been going for a little while, but I, I haven't really uh, come across it, and that's the thing that's exciting for me. Is you know you get to you get to a certain age where you start discovering new bands and stuff like that. Absolutely. And uh, man, it happens to the best of us, dude. I'm I, I just went I just went nuts, and I've been absolutely <laughs> just absorbing everything. And of course, uh, we're talking about your band, Grinding Eyes. I got a little excited because, like, you know, it's as I said, it's rare when you find a new band. You get all excited about it. You text your mates. You're like. You got chat, and they're like, "We've been into this for ages, you dickhead." And I'm like, "Oh." What <laughs> but um, <laughs> but of course, uh, your band Grinding Eyes is about to release your new album, Taste the Monochrome, on May 14, which is this Friday. It's coming up real this quick. This Friday, May. coming in hot and quick. It is, and it's really, really fucking good. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, thank you. Yeah, man. Well, uh, I mean, with the the current world events and everything like that, um, how long was it wrapped up? before release because i know that a lot of bands are st- they have to to do the lead up a little bit more further ahead yeah the lead up was crazy probably a good six months or something like that so we thought it was going to be longer but then once everything started moving um we're lucky enough to have a very sort of motivated american label that really kicked it into gear so that was good and they sort of facilitated most of the other moving components of the release. So they are, you know, strong armed us and basically said, nah, we don't want to hear shit. This is when it's happening. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we're basically locked out and gone, nah, all right. So, um, yeah, it was pretty good like that. And uh, with the whole pandemic, it's um, put everything into sort of slow motion for us. So we um, ended up mixing the album remotely that, I never expected I'd do in a million years, wow. but um, you know, you got to bite the bullet and do it. I, yeah, you know, we had got a lot of friends in different bands, and they were just sort of like, "No, nah, we're just going to wait till we can do stuff." And um, you know, we're just sort of like, "Ah, shit," you know, let's just try it. Let's just sort of see where we go. And um, we're lucky enough that it was mixed by a really good friend of ours who I trust his ears. Uh, it's a good friend of ours, Evan from Seattle. He's got his own studio in mm. Seattle downtown. And um, I sort of trusted his full angle and what he wanted. So I just sort of gave it to him and said, dude, do what you do and let us know what, you know, what you come out with. So it turned into this crazy, I had the phone going, <laughs> he had the phone going, so double sides and, you know, um, we're mixing one track and uh, I remember it was like they had the National Guard shutting down Seattle at the time and uh, I'm in Sydney and it's just like, well, it's a little bit different here, dude. And he's just like, nah, the guard's coming in. We're in full lockdown. And, um, yeah, it was like a real crazy scene. So it was, um, yeah, that that was pretty much, you know, the uh, the album mixing for us. That's intense, man, because, I mean, was there a lot of Zoom going on? Was it a lot loads of, of Zoom, things? loads of loads of Zoom, loads of sharing files, loads of phone calls, <laughs> loads of like drunken nights and him like first thing in the morning because the time difference was crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he's had one too many. He's like, listen to what I've done today. And I'm just like, I'm on my second coffee. Hang on, man. It's like, you know, nine o'clock in the morning. So it was um yeah, it was like a bit of everything. It was like Zoom and it sort of, we we had a little sort of setup to, if it was really important, 
we wouldn't sort of communicate too much. We'd just share the file, we'd get yeah. it and have a listen. If it was just, you know, how crazy does this vocal sound sound? We'd just sort of do it over Zoom and I'd be like, I can think I can hear it, man. I'm not quite sure. So, um, yeah, you sort of, we got a pretty good sort of, you know, uh, work and, you know, relationship down through the whole craziness of it. You would have to. That's the thing. Like, yeah. I can imagine being the band that you are and how all the little moving parts and, and trying to get that right, it, it would, would have had to be intense. But yeah, I- and it almost got to the point where I would do sort of a rough mix or, you know, the band and myself would be like jamming and would listen to certain parts and then even had the phone out, like recording the phone sounds now and then and going, we need it to sound a bit more like this. And he goes, it sounds fucked up, man. And he would uh, like send us a version of what he could hear. And like, yeah, there's some like way out things that we were doing. Like he, um, oh, what's some of it? Like there's one song on the album, um, which is called Wrapped in Velvet. And yes, it has right. this weird clicking sound to it. And I'm like, what is that? And he goes, I have no idea. I thought you put it in. I'm like, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> and then we worked out, it was something that was going in the background. So we wanted to double it. So we ended up like using some scissors and clicking sounds. And that became a part of the production and a part of like the percussion behind the song. So... Did you it's do like, that, that there in this? Did you do that here? I did it over Zoom, that? man. I had it going through Zoom. I had the scissors going. That's all. And awesome. it's like this weird, like delayed type of distortion going on. And yeah, it was pretty awesome. out there. I like, I have no idea how he recorded. I don't know if he had the mic going into the camera or like, you know, if he's just recording it straight off his laptop or. Well, I mean, who, who Zoom, knows? The Zoom thing, I gotta say, it's the sound quality isn't too bad compared to like all the other other ones. Like, oh, absolutely, it's, through, it's it's a game changer, I think. And uh, and I know there's some bands that I don't know. If there's a program or something like Zoom where you can go in and and do all the audio stuff and jam with people. Oh, absolutely, I, I don't know what that is. I can't remember. I know Devin Townsend was talking about it, but um, yeah, 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 it's the future, man. But at the same time, you don't want it to go too far. Because you want to have, that, you know what I mean? That <laughs> absolutely interaction, or it's going to go too far and we're going to be robots. Yeah. Oh, no, I hear you. It's definitely like delve into the electro techno world and suddenly there's like no instruments and you're just like, hey, I'm going to push play and there's my fucking song. No, no, fuck yeah. that for a joke. Yeah, yeah, you just sit there I- and go, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, <laughs> you know, especially to using different different instruments, different levels of like gain and like distortions and stuff. I think some of it is pretty cool when you're listening to it. Like you said, some of the sound quality is quite good over Zoom as well. So I think if both, both, both people on each end have to have a little bit of imagination. You have to put the bullshit filter on a little bit, (laughs) suck out some of the, the noise, but you know, once you get there, I think it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Have you have you got your vinyl copies yet? Is that they just arrived yesterday? Actually, yeah, they came. Yeah, they came. They came in hot from uh, where were they? Chicago, I think they came in from. So, but um, yeah, we are. Our deadline was pretty much today, and then they arrived yesterday. So, um, yeah, U- UPS actually came through and uh, delivered the goods. That's great. And so I imagine like the next couple of days, you're just going to be packing like madmen. Oh yeah, that is it. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. The band camp sales have gone, you know, pretty crazy. Now I have to sift through all the, uh, all the numbers and people's addresses and um, yeah, stand by. They're coming at you. <laughs> but have you, had you ha- have you had a chance to sit down and listen to it? I did, yeah. I did that. I did that first thing last night when they arrived. So I sat down, turned up the vinyl, and uh, got it going. So yeah, no, it it sounds amazing. Like uh, the guy that runs um, the label where uh, we're signed to, Little Cloud, is a total uh, vinyl Nazi. Knows his five, knows the sound, really is 
um, very picky with the actual, you know, um, you know, replication of what's actually gone onto the vinyl. So I think it was like three test pressings later and he was satisfied. So, you know, it was uh, pretty cool. So yeah, it sounds fat. It sounds great. It's really lush sounds that's on it. So, well, I mean, I, I experienced this album in the car and then I was yep. like, you know what? I feel like I'm missing things. So I, I work. <laughs> I, I just had my headphones on, man. Usually I just chuck nice. it on stereo and I just had it on, man. I just let it take me on that journey. And i got to say, that was the experience right there. Oh, okay. Because you can Sweet. hear everything that's going on and all the little moving parts and everything you've yep. put into it, even it's over amazing. Zoom. Man, yep. the thing is, it, 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 I was sitting there pressing badges for a few hours out of the loop. <laughs> and man, I was, like, I was like looking at the clock and I was like, it took me on a journey, dude, and I oh, it's nice. crazy all the atmosphere and everything you guys have put into it. You know, is that is it the same sort of sound on vinyl? Have you have you found that it? Yeah, really absolutely, out? probably more so. It's got it's a very wide mix the way it's done, even the way it was mastered. It's yep. it's mastered almost. We wanted to capture something that was almost in the round, so it does like really um you know take take on a, a a fifth dimension as such so it's you know it's it's um yeah it's a uh, a surround sound surreal surround sound for you <laughs> you know what it's an experience that's uh, nice. what I, that's what I was trying to get at is it was definitely yeah. an experience hearing that way and i know Bands used to release, you know, the 5.1 surround sound yeah, versions. Yeah, yeah. I've got a mate who's like obsessed with that. Is that something that <laughs> maybe down the track that you'll you'll think about doing? Oh shit, yeah. If we had the budget to do that, yeah, bring it on. I reckon that would be really fun. But um, yeah, at the moment, like our main angle was really just to create something that, like you said, it is a journey and to sort of the sequence of the album was really important to us. So it does feel like it builds up and takes you somewhere. Instead of just like bang, 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 track after track, I yeah. want it to really soak you in and capture you. Um, with our live sound, it's, it's very much like that. We use a lot of sort of different sounds and a lot of the songs bleed together. And with our, in our live sort of format, it's... Uh, we use a lot of projections and uh, we use really heavy smoke. So it's really quite um, uh, removed from what you're actually seeing to what you're actually hearing. So it's like uh, using all the senses, using everything all at once. Well, uh, you played Moe's. I think it was like uh, a couple Yeah, of we played Moe's last week. Yeah, last we're week. There. Yeah, last week. <laughs> Man, it was a public holiday, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, was it? Exactly. Yeah, it was a public holiday. Uh, Mo's had a, um, it was like a psych fest that we headlined. What was it called? Um, One Big Acid Tab. Oh, and that it was, was wild. Yeah. Man. yeah, it was a wild scene. It was super cool. Great turnout. And um, yeah, great people running it. Super chilled and some amazing bands. So um yeah, it was a it was an honor to be playing that show. Yeah, loved it. And Mo's themselves, like the dudes that run that, it is great. Yeah, good people. Shout out to yeah, Christian. Super lovely. Hey, shout out to Christian. I say it a lot. He's yeah, a good dude. exactly. Yeah, super yeah, yeah. cool dude. Had it up and happening, and was feeling the vibe in more ways than one. He was getting amongst oh, it. That's awesome. Well, in, in regards to you know the the album and what you did over Zoom and and putting it yep. together and then translating those new songs to live. Was that a yeah. was that tricky, being that the process uh, was different? A little before? bit, like it had its moments. We sort of knew what we sort of wanted to capture and uh, the different parts of the songs that were sort of um, had to be worked on as such. So mm. it, um, like I said before, I sort of I let Evan, who produced and mixed it, I let him basically take a lot of it because I knew him and myself have very similar music tastes. We've spent hours like pulling apart music and, you know, waffling on about bullshit so many times with records. So I trusted where he knew where I was coming from. Yeah. So I just basically do what you do and do it 
fucking well and let me know what you come up with. And, you know, he's, he's quite thick skin. So there was a lot of times where I was like, this dude, this is amazing or this sucks. Just, you know, <laughs> let's, let's review it. And, you know, some of it we did have to redo a couple of times, but um, it's uh, the deeper you dig with, you know, different sounds and different, you know, uh, feels of music, the more sort of comes out when, when you least expect it. It's like, oh, shit, how cool is this? We've removed the head off the song and now it's like breathing, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was quite amazing to tell you the truth mixing in a different you know total different environment like that so oh man it's so good but i mean you of, of course we mentioned you've you've kicked off the tour in support of the album but uh yeah. uh I, I i did see your post that the the shows are being postponed i'm so sorry to see that yeah our three shows for this weekend have all yeah. been postponed which is a real yeah it's a it's a it's a bit of a kick in the teeth but you know as i, I just keep saying look we're all in the same boat everybody's yeah. you know I'm just, I feel fortunate that we actually got the Brisbane run out of the way and we've managed to do that and slight hiccup with Sydney. But if anywhere is going to be slightly, uh, you know, put us on the back foot, I'm glad it's Sydney because it's hometown for us. I didn't want to do a half-baked show. I wanted to, you know, really, you know, have a decent show here. And we can do that pretty much any time. We don't have to sort of travel for it. So... And uh, next weekend, we're basically down in Melbourne for like three or four shows. So yeah. hopefully there's no, you know, barbecue buyers down there. There's no <laughs> whacked out dudes that are like yeah. trying to, you know, buy up barbecues galore down there. And uh, we can, you know, carry these this uh, tour through. And um, yeah, we keep getting more dates added. Like we got some Adelaide shows added now and, now we've got some of uh, these dates postponed into uh, July and August. So we'll just keep sailing through and hopefully, yeah, the uh, pandemic will, you know, slowly fade and uh, we get some normality. Get back Who to knows? Rock. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, I mean- exactly. Back to some sort of rock and roll and uh, we can actually just, you know, be a touring band again. Well, I mean, the one thing I did notice about the launch show that was meant to be having Friday was uh, yep. you had profits going to uh, the rape and domestic violence services in Australia. Yeah, which absolutely. Is important, dude, it's it's such an important cause. Uh, how How is that tying that in? Is that something that you're still going to carry on to when the launch does happen? Yeah, absolutely. Being on, uh, being in Sydney and just having a lot of friends around that do different causes and different benefits. It was um, something important that uh, it's a cause we all believe in and it's yes. seen something important to actually do, you know, uh, just being able to give a little bit of money back, bring a bit of awareness to a good cause. And um, yeah, it was something that we'll definitely carry through. We try to do it couple of benefit gigs every year trying to bring a bit of awareness to stuff we did one early last year just before the shit really hit the fan for uh for uh red cross and the fire appeal that was basically happening so just try to yeah turn you know turn a bit of awareness on to uh different causes and the posters that you come up with are yes. uh, awesome yeah. too. I mean, do you do those? <laughs> do you come up with the posters? Yeah, we all sort of do them. We've got a whole little posse of um, of artists that are good friends and uh, we all have a lot of input to it. Basically, when the band's travelling and we're away, we basically collect different images. We splice up a lot of footage to use live and um, just content footage. And, um, yeah, we basically just basically have a uh, a shared folder of just like whacked out art that we basically like and um, there's a good friend of ours Jim in uh, in Melbourne that does a lot of our artwork and then there's a good friend of ours Robin who actually did the uh, album artwork in Sweden in Stockholm and um, we just sort of share it around ourselves I do quite a bit of it um, yeah it's to us the the artwork and the whole vibe and creating a bit of a something different with the shows is important to us Absolutely. instead of just, Hey, we're headlining. We have no idea who the fuck we're playing with. We've got a couple <laughs> of supports. We might even call them special supports, but we don't really know who they are and fucking come see the show. We're not into that. 
I prefer to create a vibe and everybody's there, you know. Somebody might like some other band, but they mightn't like us and that's super cool. And the people that like the other band might like us and we get a few extra crew coming along. So it's all just, you know, it's a community and uh, just to create a bit of atmosphere and something a bit different with each show. Well, I like that. Do you sell the, do you sell the prints? Yeah, we sometimes do. Um, we got some friends uh, in Wollongong um, that are the dudes from Tumbleweed and stuff like that. And they sort of got us into doing some so thick leather, sort of thicker cardboard type of um, posters and selling them and stuff. And the only real downfall, okay, the biggest downfall of having posters when you're on the road is you fuck them up all the time. Oh, yeah. Every time you move, you lose like 10 of them and they get crushed and people sit on them. And so you might start off with 100, then there's 80, then there's 60. And then before you know it, you're at the gig and it's like, why have we only got 10 posters left, man? And you're like, oh, the backseat of the van's full of like 50 fucked up ones. So oh, it's, it's, it's a hard one to do, but we do like to have them to sell them. Yeah. A lot of people actually, they contact us online and through Bandcamp and stuff asking for them. So we, um, yeah, we sell them a lot through that. And we also sell like large, you know, um, A0s and A2s. We do a bit of, you know, guerrilla advertising out there, get out there with the, uh, you know, clag and glue and, you know, hit the walls when we can. So it's all, uh, you know, it's all a DIY Absolutely. style thing. Have you ever thought of doing like a, like a table book, like a coffee table book with all your artworks and everything like I that? I like that. I like the idea. It's almost, um, yeah, I like the idea of that. No, I have not. But now that you mention it, I like the idea of it. Because that way you don't have to carry, you know, like... I the, don't have to I carry them around. I can just carry a book and go, here's the fucking book. And it's got everything. The book. That's it, with like photos. It could almost be like a Seinfeld thing where the book is an actual table and you could actually have a, like a coaster hang, hanging on it. Mate. It's a book book. See? I'm not... I'm sometimes I'm okay. Mate, my, don't ask my wife that. She won't say <laughs> But um, You and I can split the profits. There you go. <laughs> You're on the I just, just, hey man, I'll just buy a copy when it's up because I think that's a really <laughs> cool idea. Because I mean, you know, I love love the artwork and people love it as well. But being able to flip through and see the history of the band and history of shows and go back and go, oh man, like five years ago, I was at that show and I did this and I saw this and memories, man. I love that. I wish yeah, I absolutely. Man. Yeah, there should be more books of just advertising different artwork and stuff like that. There's a one of my all time favorite art books is one called Art of Rock. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's basically huh. all the uh, it starts off basically in the late 50s, goes all the way to like the early 80s. And it goes all the way through the psychedelic period in America and thousands of just amazing eye catching designs in there. It's like a huge, big, you know coffee table book but it's uh it's mind-blowing it's got like all the psychedelic stuff it goes into like a lot of punk rock all the silk screens that came out of new york uh all the ramon stuff yeah it's an amazing so uh, journey i'm gonna have to i'm gonna hunt that down like because i it, remember it's, books it's kids. The- do you remember <laughs> books, kids books are rad no nah, kids don't they, those kids don't remember books come on right oh, they remember the tablet <laughs> That's it, hey. Hey, you know, a tablet that you open up and it's a book. It's not an actual book. See? Yeah, Aye. that'll, that'll for you. You're going to drag them in with technology <laughs> and then they open it and they go, oh, fuck. How do I it's gone analog. It? No? And they're like, oh, pictures. And that's how you get them reading again. Mm. <laughs> yeah, not really. But um, <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> We're talking about tumbleweed before. You did a split, yes. split with them. We did, yeah. The first single off this album um, came out as a split uh, with those guys. It's something we'd been talking about for quite a while. And, um, yeah, we finally did it. And, uh, yeah, a good friend of ours, Tim Guitars in Brisbane, put it out on his label, Tim Records. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was – it was just good timing. And, um, yeah, so that – yeah, that came out about two weeks ago. Man, oh, a shout out to Tim as well. What a legend. 
What an absolute legend. Yeah, we've learned a lot of him. Just the uh, drive and the focus of that guy is amazing. Just the DIY style of, you know, just do I it love, yourself, and, you know. I love that, you know, I've spoken to so many bands internationally. They're like, oh, Tim, yeah. he's like this wizard. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's like the wizard of the mountain. That, oh, like, absolutely. All these are like, Tim, he's like, you have yeah. to go there. Go to his, like, wizard place. The wizard and den, and yeah, he's the yeah. Uh, the holy grail of Fuzz Mountain. <laughs> yeah, Fuzz Mountain. There you go. There you go. He is. He's like this wise, uh, you know, Fuzz Mountain Lord, and so many yeah. people know about it internationally. It's incredible. absolutely, absolutely, and he has helped so many people. No matter yeah, who man. they are, who what they're touring with, could be a broken fuzz pedal, could be a guitar that's literally unplayable. The amount of people I've come across, they're just like, man, what's going on with Tim? You know, this is wild. Or, you know, people that don't even know him and they're like, where can I get a guitar fixed in Brisbane? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm about to blow your mind, dude. You go <laughs> see this dude, Tim. It's going to take you six hours because you're not going to be able to leave, you know, where he is. It's like, you know, floor to, you know, ceiling of just crazy stuff. Could be broken guitars, could be records, could be amps. It's yeah, it's a wild, wild scene. It's extremely disappointing that uh, the shops closed down. Yeah, but yeah, I, I believe fully Tim's going to be out there doing something. And he's, you know, fingers are going to be itchy. He's going to be out there doing new shit. It's going to be, you know, he's going to have something up and going. Before we know it, we're just going to be like, fuck, that's a genius idea. Oh, it's Tim. Of course, it's a yeah, genius yeah. idea. Wizard. He's doing something new and... You know, there's, I know there's a lot of, you know, like even just the rehearsal space that he had, the recording facilities, the whole deal. It's, um, yeah, there'll be something of that around the corner that he'll be doing. So. Absolutely. He's a smart cookie. He'll, he'll be back he into it, man. He but uh, will be. talking about, you know, uh, Tumbleweed, how did your, um, how'd you hook up with those, those guys over the, like, how does that relationship uh, go back? Yeah, look, I've known those guys. I've known Stephen Paul for many years from, you know, just uh, doing shows with them and, you know, a lot of mutual friends and stuff. And um, uh, Grinding Eyes have done quite a few shows with them. Yeah. And um, it was the first show back that we did last year. And, they were doing a handful of shows and everybody was just like, can we do shows? And they were like, we're doing a show at the Paddington RSL, you know, come do it with us. And it was before anybody was really talking about the two shows in the one night type of trip. And yeah. they're like, I think we might have to do two shows. And I'm like, all right, bring it on. Let's sort of see how this works. And um, they're like, at that stage, they were sort of talking about doing like an afternoon show like people used to do in the all ages type of scene. And then it sort of turned into like a matinee show and then a late night show. So um, it was cool. It was just us and them and we just did two different sets and um, basically meant that you can play a venue like uh, Paddington RSL, which is like small for them, obviously. And yeah. um we get to, you know, do double crowds, double seating and, um, you know, get to actually play. So it was, a, it was a nice breath, you know, fresh air of, you know, actually doing a show and seeing those guys. But to cut a long story short, that's where the seven inch came from. We were like, yep. man, it's nice to be, you know, catching up and seeing people again. And we're just like, let's do the seven inch, you know, people have been talking about and, you know, what songs are we going to do? And I'm like, well, we're about to put out a record. And they're like, oh, we've got some, you know, demos and stuff. Let's just get something going. So that was where, yeah, we sort of knocked it on the head and went, all right, let's try to get it out in a couple of months. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, I mean, you've, you've toured internationally and, you know, worked your asses off over the years. And, and you've, you've toured America, which I, a lot of my mates have said that have done it have said it's really difficult, like financially and, and everything. Like, uh, but yeah, how, absolutely. How, how do you find that compared to, you know, touring the rest of the world? Because when you're, when you're a young dude, you know, or lass, you, you, you're yeah. like, man, tour America and everything like that. And, and there's a lot more to it than what people expect, right? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it really, um, it's, you've got to be in the right mindset to actually do it, I think. And I think some people, you know, uh, 
they romanticize the whole thing over it and it is grueling it is like you said it's time consuming financially it fucks you the whole deal you have to sort of have everything lined up quite yep. nicely merch is what sort of carries you through you have to sort of you know make sure you can actually sell some merch go make sure you got the fucking merch to begin with you know <laughs> oh, man. So, um, but look, we were, um, we've done bits and pieces of lots of different stuff. It's nice when you're doing your own headline shows, but it's also, we were very fortunate. Some very good friends of ours, uh, Swerve Driver from the UK asked us to come and support them. So we did a, uh, a, uh, East coast run with them and, you know, we were, you know, we got to share the bus with them and we shared gear and, um, Half of us ended up playing, you know, percussion on stage with them. And it was, you know, a nice party hangout session. So it was an awesome scene doing that. And, um, yeah, we're just really, you know, um, lucky that, uh, you know, we were given the opportunity to do that. But it does get a lot more grueling. Like once we left those guys and basically went back up the coast and did our own run, it uh, is a lot more grueling, but it's a whole different thing altogether. You're playing smaller venues. It's uh, a good community. You sort of tap into the different scenes that people are doing um, and, uh, you know, just make sure you, like I said, you've got some merch to actually sell and you can make it to the next destination. you got some petty cash <laughs> and you can pay for some fuel and um, keep it rolling. That's it. That's exactly right. I mean, touring the world and things like that, have you – played somewhere and gone i wonder how this is going to go and it just blew the expectations out, out off the roof is there anywhere in the yeah world absolutely itself? yeah you know it's we've got it we've had a few of those um um we played we played portland okay so we played portland we played uh a place called the bunk bar which is a very famous sandwich store so it is uh, and it's got like a bar sort of connected to it and it has like some booths and stuff it's got a vibe to it it's a fucking super cool people that run it and um but i didn't really know anything about it so i've got some friends in portland i'm like what's the vibe and they're like yeah it's it's cool it's gonna be interesting to have a band play there and um they got out some massive bits of wood got it over the uh over the, the, you know, the classic diner booths. They built a stage. They had a great PA, turned it on. And it was probably one of the most impressive setups I've ever seen put together. And we had a kick and show, great crew, great people turning up. And um, we're like people spilling out onto the street. It was, um, you know, one of those classic balmy sort of, you know, nights where the doors are all open, <laughs> no noise complaints because it's an industrial sort of area. And, um, yeah, it was wild. It was a good scene. And, um, yeah, it was that was probably one of the most, like, walked in there and went, oh, this is going to be interesting to finishing the night going, that was a killer. Well, who saw that coming? Not me. So, yeah, that's definitely probably one of the standouts. Did you get sandwiches though and beers? Oh, got got fucking toasted sandwiches <laughs> that would rock your world. Like <laughs> That's shit. six cheese deep and still a couple of pickles and who knows what else is going on there. It was amazing. That's Not it. to mention more craft beer than you could ever want. And I do remember they had the most finest coffee and good coffee sometimes in the US is hard to find. They are like this Italian guy that was getting the coffee brewed and oh, they had like iced coffees that were like to die for, good espressos. And when you're jet lagged to the eyeballs, that's the main thing that you're looking for, some good caffeine hit. That sounds that sounds like uh, the afterlife. It was heaven. It was heaven, <laughs> heaven in Portland. Damn, damn, man. Bunk bar. If you're ever there, check it. To. I'll have to. Uh, so you were you were meant to tour with Supergrass, right? Yeah, we we um we were doing the US again with Supergrass, some uh, UK dates and Australian dates, and um, basically the pandemic. I think it kicked in like literally like two weeks before um, the Supergrass US dates were supposed to kick in. So um, yeah, it was um. 
the dates have been postponed. There's possibilities. I keep seeing dates pop up mm-hmm. that, you know, it's still going and it's still sort of locked in, but who knows? It's uh, America is uh, far away from, um, you know, letting innocent Australian travelers coming in to play some rock and roll. But um, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, that was put on the back burner and um, yeah, that was quite disappointing. Took fucking forever to get some money back from Delta Airways, trying to shake some money out of their pockets and uh, not to mention, you know, some other, you know, travel insurance and uh, six sticks car rentals. Oh, there's some fine specimens there. Once you're calling them up, trying to get some money out of them, trying to get refunds and stuff. But, you know, that's all part of touring, as you said before. Financially, it can fuck you. But um, you just got to, yeah, keep on the ball and make sure you don't, you know, do yourself in. That's it. That's right. Well, I mean, with Supergrass, they were like one of the uh, first bands I saw live. Big Day Out 97. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Fuck, man. Fuck. That was because I'd heard them and seen them on recovery and stuff. And I'm being yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was like my moment. And I saw him and I was like, I get it. I get it all. And I it get just, it all. And it just, oh, no. That was such, that was such a power trio in man. their day. Like they really gelled. They had bits and pieces of everything. And, you know, like they were obviously, you know, the whole english background of like the kinks to the who to you know even beatles and stuff but i think just that you know classic comical english you know like almost monty pythonish yeah, yeah. style of their playing um really spoke to people so um you know and they're such lovely people as well so you know yeah we we're really disappointed that it uh we had to put the brakes on that one so but well, such hopefully- a great band Hopefully it's still gonna still gonna happen. Soon. Hopefully, yeah, it will still happen. Look, you know, their their big thing was getting their band back together, yeah, and you man. know, they had some new songs, and you know, they just wanted to, you know, revitalize it and uh, kick it on a bit. So, um, you know, I'm sure it will happen, but you know, who knows? Who knows what we're all in for? So, I just want to see see you guys together. That'd be awesome. Be yeah, incredible. it would be a fun bill. It would be really fun. So. Hold your breath. It's coming around the corner. Who knows? It's when, how, real. or what? Who knows? But I reckon it's definitely, it's it's going to kick off again, man. But, uh, you know, have what else you got cooking? Oh, I know the shows and things that are, are being postponed, but you've got the album coming out, the vinyl. Yeah, we've got, we've got, yeah, we've got a good run of shows. We're going to Adelaide for our first time, which we're damn excited about. In the middle of July, we're going, we're hitting Adelaide. So, we're doing like a little psych fest over there at Adelaide University at the uh, uni bar there, which is going to be like wild. I'm looking forward to get to Adelaide. We've, it's one of those ones that's always slipped through the cracks. It's been, I think, on itineraries for us at least five, six times. And um, I think the Supergrass, Supergrass was going to be our official first time hitting Adelaide. Oh, wow. And lo and behold, it slipped through the cracks again. So um yeah, it's uh, we're really looking forward to it. We're doing another like little sort of small punk rock sort of venue, um, sort of artist space there called um, Animal House, which is going to be pretty wild as well. So um, yeah, we're going to do a, like a whole weekend of run of shows through Adelaide. So looking forward to that. And uh, we're doing a another festival in Sydney called Glide Festival, which is more sort of shoegaze, sort of dark wave, sort of all um, New South Wales bands. Uh, it's got Peel and a whole heap of just amazing bands that we're looking forward to do that one. So I think that is, um, that's mid-June. And uh, there's a couple of other, we're doing another festival um, coming up in October down in Victoria. So yeah, there's quite a few things that are uh, bubbling away there that's coming up on the horizon. At the moment, I'm just focusing on just getting uh, our album out and uh, circulating that with the live show and um, basically, yeah, working on that and then building up to some of these uh, festivals that are coming up later in the year. And are there plans to come back to Queensland? There that's is. Fun. fully. Um, we're fully looking at... Um, I heard uh, or I saw in some emails earlier today 
breaking news. Um, October, November, or something like that. So, um, my birthday moving on. November, the say it again. My my birthday's in November. Hey, I knew there was a reason why I saw November there. Big fortieth. Oh, hey. there you go. Party vibes all around. Be Look there. out. I'll be I knew there was a reason why November had <laughs> crept in there. Excellent. Wow. Lock it in, lock it down. Well, either way, I'll be celebrating early. Whenever you're coming back this way, I'm definitely going to be there. And, uh, man, fan for life. Holy shit. I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah. I love you guys. Hey. Thank you very much. Bowie T all around. Bowie T. Just uh, come, around. yeah. Come hit us up when we're up and, um, yeah, we'll come and hang out. For sure, man. Well, uh, Matt, thanks for hanging on the show. We'll have all the links to the album. Uh, that's Taste the Monochrome. That'll be out this week. Bro, all the best. Thank Take you care. very much, man. Thank you very much for having me. Much appreciated. And, um, yeah, we'll be seeing you soon.